In this section, we will talk about hypothesis testing for means. As a quick re recap of last section, for a population proportion p, the sample proportion is given by p hat. The standard deviation of the population can be calculated and is known, as we saw in the previous section. We would use the normal distribution with mean equals to 0 and standard deviation equals to 1, which will give us a z-test statistic. For a population mean mu, the sample mean is given by x bar. The standard deviation of the population is almost always unknown. Therefore, we use the t-distribution. Our test statistic is given by t equals to the sample uh, mean minus mu sub 0, which is the null value, divided by the sample standard deviation over the square root of n. The p-value is a probability that obtaining um, our observed result given uh, h0 is true. The smaller the p-value, the more convincing our evidence is that the null hypothesis is, is false. So if the p-value is smaller than alpha or level of significance, we will reject the null hypothesis. If it's greater than alpha, we will fail to, re to reject the null hypothesis. Here's an example. The run times for 20 participants at the local 5K race was 29.2. So for this sample of 20 participants, our sample mean was 29.2 minutes with a standard deviation of 5.67. So let's write this down. Our sample mean x bar is 29.2. Our sample standard deviation is 5.67. And the sample size is 20. We want to determine, based on this sample of 20 participants, is there an is there evidence that the true mean runtime for all, so keyword here is all, of the participants is below 30 minutes? Use a 0 0.05 significance level. Okay, so first, let's state our null hypothesis and our alternate hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is that the population mean is equal to 30 minutes. Now, what do we? What, what is a test? Uh, what is the alternative uh, claim? The alternate hypothesis is that we want to see: is there enough evidence that the true mean time for all the participants is below 30 minutes? So our alternate hypothesis is that mu is less than 30. Step two: let's calculate our test statistic t. In this case, because the population standard deviation is unknown, we will use the t distribution and the t test statistic. The formula is t equals to the sample mean minus uh, the null value divided by s over square root of n. So our sample mean is 29.2. Our null value is 30 divided by the sample standard deviation 5.67 over the square root of 20. And we can use technology from this point onwards. So in, in technology, we will input these values. So uh, because we're doing the hypothesis test for one mean, we will click on one mean. What do we have? Do we have individual values or do we have a summary? Well, in this case, we have a summary. Okay, our sample size is 20. Our sample mean is 29.2. And our sample de standard deviation is 5.67. Do we want a confidence interval or a significance test? In this case, we're doing the significance test. The null value for the population mean uh, well, we are trying to test that um, the population mean is less than 30, so our null value is going to be 30, and the alternative hypothesis is less than. So let's make sure we have everything correct. Mu equals 30 is our null hypothesis. Mu less than 30 is our alternate hypothesis. That all looks good. Our test statistic is given by t equals negative 0 0.6310, and our p-value is 0.2678.
okay, our test statistic is negative uh, 0 0.6310, and this is negative 0 0.6310. Uh, our inequality is less than, so we're going to shade the area to the left. And the p-value here is 0.2678. So the p-value is the probability that t is less than negative 0 0.6310, which is 0 0.2678. Okay, so step four, let's compare our p-value to the significance level. So our p-value, 0.2678, is greater than our significance level, which is 0 0.05. So let's write a conclusion sentence. Since the p-value of 0.2678 is greater than 0 0.05, which is our alpha. This means that this could have happened um, by chance. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis, which means there is not sufficient evidence to support. And what are we supporting? We're always supporting, or um, we're, in this case, there's not sufficient evidence to support our uh, alternate hypothesis that the true mean of all participants is below 30 minutes. That the true mean for all participants is below 30 minutes. So this is saying that, yeah, like uh, the sample mean of 29.2, that could have occurred by chance. There's a high probability that this could have occurred just by chance. So we don't have enough evidence to support that the, um, the mean runtime for all participants is below 30 minutes. In our next example, insurance companies track life, life expectancy information to assist in determining the cost of life insurance policies. The insurance company knows that last year, the life expectancy of its policyholders was 77 years. This is the accepted or believed fact. So in step one, our null hypothesis is that um, the mean is 77 years. They want to know if their clients this year have a longer life expectancy on average. So the company randomly select, uh, samples some of the recently paid policies to see if the mean life expectancy has increased. So we want to now, we want to test, has the mean increased? So are people living longer? So is the mean greater than, I'm sorry, it should be 77. Remember the null and the alternate hypothesis always have the same value. Okay, is the mean greater than 77? Step two, let's calculate our t statistic. So for our t statistic, we need to know what is our sample mean. Um, we know what the null hypothesis is. That's going to be 77 divided by the sample standard deviation, which we also aren't given, divided by the square root of n. So we need to calculate what is our sample mean and what is our sample standard deviation, which we could do, or we could use uh, technology. Okay, so I've already copied this data. And I'm going to go to our calculators. And notice that we have summary, but we can also enter individual observations. So one thing we can do is we can actually paste the data in here. And we can um, use our individual observations to run a significance test. So we will uh, paste the data. And once the data is pasted, what do we want? We want a significance test. The null value of our population is 77. We want to, we're trying to test is the mean greater than 77. So we're going to, we're going to pick greater than. Let's take a look at our null hypothesis, mu equals 77. And our alternate is, is mu is greater than 77. That's uh, exactly what we stated there. So that all looks good. Our test statistic is 0.15983. Okay, so our test statistic t 
is equal to 1.5983. And so we want to find the p-value, which is a probability that t is greater than 1.5983. So the probability that t is greater than 1.5983, this is the, the p-value, and the p-value is given to us as 0 0.0632. So our p-value is 0 0.0632. Okay, in step four, let's compare our p-value to the significance level. So 0 0.0632 is less than 0.10, which is our significance level. So this is telling us that at the 0.10 significance level, this could have happened. There's a high probability that, um, so 0 0.0632 is a probability that this occurred by chance, given that the null is true. 0 0.0632 is a low probability compared to 0 0.10. Because this is a low probability that, there's a low probability that this occurred by chance, which means we cannot support the null hypothesis. Okay, so we're going to say since, the p-value of 0 0.0632 is less than our alpha, which is 0.10, that's our significance level. We reject the null hypothesis. Because this is a, there is a very low probability that this occurred by chance. Therefore, there is enough evidence to support our alternate hypothesis. Okay, there is enough evidence to support the claim. What is a claim? That um, the population mean has increased, that people are living longer than 70 years. That the population mean is greater than 77. Okay, so think of questions and come prepared to class to ask them.